almost cartoonishly elitist and aristocratic, Cassandra hailed from the wealthy upper class of human society. She was shown to be an extremely arrogant xenophobe, proclaiming herself to be the last pure human, and considering the new evolved humans of the far future as mongrels and mutant stock, due to their intermingling with the natives of the planets they colonized. Ironically, Cassandra herself had no human body to speak of, having lengthened her life by untold thousands of years at the expense of her own humanity, so obsessed was she with preserving her beauty and keep herself pure. This superiority complex put her at odds with the working class Rose Tyler, who characterized Cassandra as a bitchy trampoline, who existed only as lipstick and skin, going on to call her Michael Jackson. Cassandra in return looked down on Rose as common and referred to her as a chav, though she grudgingly recognized her as being of pure human stock, and later had no qualms about admiring and objectifying Rose's body for own purposes upon possessing her. On platform one, she was shown to be selfish, thin-skinned, and devious. The cost of her life-extending surgeries had driven her to murder and crime, and so she was perfectly willing to sacrifice the entirety of the station's guest out of sheer greed. When these plans were foiled and condemned by the doctor, Cassandra expressed no remorse for her actions. Years later, she remained stubbornly stuck in her ways, and her apathetic nature and dislike of subhumans ultimately gave away her facade while inhabiting Rose's body, since the doctor realized that Rose would care about the suffering endured by the human test subjects of intensive care, and Cassandra did not. She enjoyed the attentions of her slavishly loyal manservant Chip, but was quite happy to abandon him to his fate when the two of them became separated. Despite her pretensions of human purity and nobility, Cassandra displayed remarkable ignorance of the artifacts of past human culture she often surrounded herself with, erroneously referring to a 1950s-style jukebox as an iPod, characterizing pop songs like Soft Cells, Tainted Love, and Britney Spears, Toxic, as traditional earth ballads, and describing the ostrich as a bird with a wingspan of 50 feet that blew fire from its nostrils. Similarly, while possessing her body, Cassandra initially mistook the ringtone of Rose's superphone as originating from her posterior. Upon being informed that Rose spoke Old Earth Cockney, she promptly embarked on an improvised and unconvincing imitation of her host's London accent, using expressions derived from rhyming slang to fool the doctor. She did, however, speak some French, and proved considerably adept with technology, using illegal psychographs, metal spiders, remote control droids and teleportation to further her goals. Despite her generally callous attitude, Cassandra was proven to have been far more compassionate in the past, while she still had a full human body. After Chip, possessed by her future self, told her how beautiful she was and collapsed, Cassandra's immediate reaction was to rush to his aid and call for help. This would change her greatly from the person she once was, as her prolonged life and desperate struggle for survival made her indifferent to life in general and other people in particular. It wasn't until briefly possessing one of the infected new humans on New Earth that Cassandra finally regained some of the humanity she'd lost long ago. Experiencing a taste of all the pain they were going through and their loneliness and isolation which closely mirrored her own, Cassandra displayed genuine signs of distress over the carrier's plight. Albeit reluctantly and mainly due to circumstance, she ultimately helped the doctor save all of the infected people in the hospital and could even be seen smiling in happiness until the doctor told Cassandra that she had helped make the new humans and could not deny them. Cassandra's fatal flaw was her extreme reluctance to accept death. As her skin desiccated on platform one, she rebuffed the doctor's statement that everything has its time and everything dies, claiming she was too young. This vanity led her to become callous and highly unapproachable. She watched other people wither and die around her while she grappled onto life with both hands. Rose would later concede Cassandra had a knack for survival, and as time wore on she resorted to ever more radical methods of self-preservation, occupying the bodies of Rose, Chip, one of the infected new humans and the doctor in rapid succession. The latter was appalled by her willingness to possess other people's bodies just to prolong her lifespan, since it robbed the host of their lives. Only after she realized that Chip's body was dying did Cassandra finally accept it was time to die. 